I got an 887 A star A star A in triple higher science GCSE last year and I'm here to make your grades even better than mine. Science is actually extremely simple if you know what you're doing. This video is specifically for GCSE science in the UK but some tips may still be helpful for those of you studying in other countries. And at the end of this video I will be giving away flashcards that I have worked very hard to give you for free. There are only three things that you need to succeed in this exam. I will speak about them in detail. One, to understand the concepts. Two, to remember the concepts. And then three, where most people fumble, to be able to correctly apply the concepts in an exam situation. Feel free to skip to whatever timestamp you need the most. One, how do you understand the concepts? Guys, do not go into that biology exam and you can't tell me what the function of a nucleus is. Do not go into that chemistry exam and you can't tell me where the metals are on the periodic table. Do not go into that physics exam and you can't even name me three contact forces. These are your basics. You stand zero chance of even passing if you cannot tell me your basics. Before we can start doing complicated things with equations and using flashcards and applying this in exam contexts, we've got to first actually have that knowledge. If you know somebody that cannot even point out to you the nucleus on a diagram of a cell, send them this video let them know that they are cooked okay so there's levels to your understanding right in science there's a heck of a lot of content and depending on your exam board whether you're taking triple or combined foundation or higher that's obviously going to vary at the bare minimum you've got to know your basics it's like building a pyramid you've got to have that strong foundation at the bottom before you can build to the top okay so we've established that there is content that we need to understand but how do we get ourselves to understand one ask your teachers okay but what if my teachers suck i'll speak about that in a second if you have a good teacher or at least a decent teacher use them they literally get paid to ensure that you have all the knowledge that you need to succeed in these exams the second you're in a class and you find yourself not understanding something either raise your hand right then and there or just take a mental note of that question and then ask the teacher when the class ends or at a later time okay but what if they try to explain it to you again and you still don't understand most schools have multiple teachers for each subject if teacher a didn't explain it in a way you understood go to teacher B. Okay, but what if you still didn't understand even when teacher B explained it to you? There are abundant resources online for GCSE science. For example, Seneca, BBC Bite Size, free science lessons on YouTube, Cognito on YouTube, even brilliant more and brilliant later if you didn't understand it on one web page go to the next and in the rare case that you did all of that and you still didn't understand grab the textbook read through the parts that you don't understand now take a picture get ai to explain it to you you can really dumb it down when ai is the one explaining it to you i mean i just asked chat gpt to explain the motor effect to me in a way that a five-year-old would be able to understand and I think it did a pretty good job. I recommend using AI in combination with another study resource like a textbook as it can sometimes make mistakes. With all of that being said, there is no excuse. We live in the 21st century. Just because your teacher sucks, doesn't mean your grades have to suck too. Now it's all fun and games finally understanding all this new information, but it's no use just understanding it. You've got to implement step two remembering it in order to remember it you've actually actively got to test yourself on it this is hard students don't like doing this which is also why not everyone is going to get an a star or an eight or a nine you cannot afford to just start highlighting or making pretty aesthetic notes or rereading a passage and simply calling it a day if you're one of those people that can do that and remember a hundred percent of the information a year from now sure be my guest but 99 percent of people aren't like that so we're just gonna have to put in a bit more effort if you've been on study tube you already know what i'm about to say use active recall techniques but in my opinion the most straightforward time-saving easy to track progress method that you can use for this is digital flashcards take a concept or an idea that you've learned now there's a question on the front answer on the back you try and answer the question in your head out loud you might write it down whatever you want but you do not flip over that card 
until you've answered the question to the best of your abilities. Now you check for the correct answer and make corrections from what you got wrong. Physical flashcards are also cool, but digital flashcards are objectively better. They have complex algorithms that have been specifically built around the way human memory works. You're saving yourself a heck of a lot of time and a heck of a lot of energy from going like, oh, and this is the pile of information I forgot. And this is the pile of information that I remembered. Like, no, an algorithm can do this for you and can probably do it better than you can. No offense. And they're good. Like, don't get me wrong, they're okay, but it's just so much easier and it saves you so much time and energy when there's an algorithm that's tracking your progress. So now let's speak about the flashcards themselves. So in my GCSE days, I don't know why I'm talking like I'm a granny. It was literally a year ago. I made a grand total of 217 flashcards for physics, 287 flashcards for biology, and 305 flashcards for chemistry. And now all 800 or so of these are yours for free. I started making this Anki deck maybe around year nine-ish, year 10. So this is literally years of my work that I want to give away for free. This is the most comprehensive flashcard deck that I have made in my entire life. I'd say that this covers about 90% 85% of what you need to know. If you're not using this deck, feel free to skip to the next section. But if you do want to use this deck, there are a few things to keep in mind. Here's a list. One, my exam board was AQA. If you're doing a different exam board, your spec is also going to be a bit different. I wouldn't have covered all your content, but I would still say that it's a good starting point. Two, I did all three sciences, I did them all separate, and I did them all higher. I took the hardest combination of sciences that you could possibly do. So if you're only doing two, if you're doing foundation, if you're doing combined science, there will be some information in there that you do not need to know for your exam. If you see anything weird and complex, just check if it's in your spec. If it's not, when you download it, delete it. Three, there is a real lack of physics equations in this deck. And this is because I was part of the <coughs> the 2024 cohort, we were the Panorama Babies. We were the last year group to have our secondary education disrupted by the Panorama in year seven and year eight. So the exam board gave us the grace of a full equation sheet. If there are any equations I'm missing, you're gonna need to add them in. Four, these are my flashcards, so I've made them specifically for the way that my brain works. You might see some weird mnemonic acronyms or just some oddly specific bits of information or just characteristic quirks of my brain. Feel free to change them and add whatever suits you best. You also might want to change your Anki settings, but there are already 10 million YouTube videos on that. So yeah, go watch them. You want to review whatever flashcards you have as often as possible. Lord knows that even though I had already reviewed them to hell and back, I was still always the first person to get to school on the exam days and I was minding my business, reviewing my flashcards each and every day. I'll have a video on how to survive exam season out soon, but if it's out already, I'll link it here. So you've understood the content, you've memorized the content, but you're still not done. In fact, you're only just getting started. This is the step where most people will trip up. This is step number three. You need to be able to take the knowledge that you have and then be able to apply it in this exam context. So first of all, why is this so difficult? This is because there are two types of questions that you could get in an exam. There's the basic quick define active transport. What is the equation that links speed, distance and time? They're easy peasy, straightforward. You've probably even reviewed flashcards for them. But there's a second type of question you can get an application based question. Now in physics, you're given this weird scenario where this car got struck by lightning and you need to substitute numbers and answers into like three different equations to work out the potential difference of the lightning. In chemistry, they're giving you this weird reaction you've never seen before and they're expecting you to just bolt and white your way through to solve it. In biology, they're asking you about this weird gene mutation and its interaction with this non-communicable disease and then telling you to evaluate the interaction between them. What's going on is they know you know what mitosis is. They just want to see what's going to happen 
when you put mitosis in this real life scenario where something weird is happening. So challenge number one, this is a real life scenario. How can I apply what I know to this scenario? And then challenge number two is, God, I just, I have to take a deep sigh before I mention this. Challenge number two is the mark schemes. How could this be a GCSE science video without me speaking about the damn mark schemes? Because you, you can try your best. You can understand a concept. You can memorize it to the depth of the planet. But if you haven't used the exact language that they've put into the mark schemes, I'm sorry to break it to you, but you're not going to get the mark. So let's take this question, for example. Biology paper one, higher tier, summer 2023. What is a tissue? Me right now, not having remembered everything that I learned last year, would have said that it's a collection of cells. It's a group of cells, right? I mean, yeah, a tissue is a group of cells, but that answer is worth zero marks. It's technically correct, I guess, but it's not correct enough for AQA. They are not only a group of cells. You also have to mention that they are all the same or that they all share a similar function. Without either one of those two points, you cannot get the one mark. Now, this is a simple question where mark scheme logic is applied. Think of all the super complex five, six markers where they're gonna throw the same mark scheme logic at you in more complicated scenarios. Just because it makes sense in your head doesn't mean it makes sense to the exam board. Remember that. Now, mark scheme logic is the absolute spawn of Satan in biology, slightly better in chemistry, slightly better in physics. There are also a lot of key scientific terms. And if you do not know the proper exam board's definition of this, yippee, you get zero marks. Also be careful, exam boards can have slightly different definitions for the exact same thing. In chemistry, the top number here on an element in Edexcel is called the atomic mass. In AQA, you cannot call this number the atomic mass. In AQA, this is called the mass number. They refer to the exact same thing. They are the exact same thing, but one word will get you the mark and the other will guarantee you a big fat zero. How did I know all of this? I did way too many past papers and you should too. But the absolute worst thing that you could do is to do a paper and then leave it as that. Or if you get like a mock grade back and your mock papers back and then you just don't like it. So you put it in the bin. If you did a paper and then just left it as that, Congratulations, you have officially wasted your time. When you do the paper, you mark it, and then you put that score front and center on that page, no matter how good or how bad it was. And now you're gonna go through and you're gonna make a list of all the questions you got wrong and why you got them wrong. Did you read the question wrong? Did you substitute the wrong numbers into the wrong equation? Did you round the answer to three decimal points instead of three significant figures? Was it a silly mistake? Was it a genuine lack of knowledge? Did you get the concept, but then you didn't use the mark scheme's words? You need to be asking yourself all of these questions next time in order to genuinely succeed. You need to go in and address all of the issues especially the ones where you just genuinely lacked the knowledge. You are then going to add new flashcards to your deck under the targeted flashcard section of it. And they are all going to be for questions that you have gotten wrong in past papers or worksheets. You are allowed to make these flashcards in bullet point format. In fact, you should make them in bullet form format because it's easier for you to memorize and focus on what's most important and the mark schemes are also bullet points. You are going to do as many papers as you can, as often as you can, but I may have a small little cheat code that can help you predict what questions may come up in your exam. But before that, if you do this past paper and you figure out, okay, this is a genuine lack of knowledge, I need to go back to my basics, I need to go back to my understanding, I may have another very specific application that can help you with this. And this is brilliant. Do your teachers suck? Do you hate boring lessons? 
Well, I do too. So I use this platform. <laughs> Brilliant is an online learning platform that has thousands of interactive lessons in maths, science, programming, data analysis, and AI. No more boring lessons that you don't understand. Brilliant breaks down every concept into simple terms and gets you interactively playing with them. It has a principles first approach, which gets you understanding the concept first, then applying it to real life situations like you would in your tests. You can also use Brilliant on the go. Quickly remind yourself of key scientific concepts on the bus to your exam. And of course, the topic of today's video, science. Brilliant has science courses to suit your every need. These courses will get you thinking like a scientist, thinking like an engineer. You could be designing electric circuits or learning about the physics of black holes. These courses will help you to develop the scientific intuition that you need to succeed in these exams. And of course, I hooked you guys up with a sweet deal. If you want to try everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for a whole 30 days, you can scan the barcode or check out the link in my description. You can also get 20% off if you choose to continue with the Brilliant annual subscription. Again, you can try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a whole 30 days by scanning the barcode or heading to brilliant.org forward slash girl in world. What are you waiting for? So, I did some detective work. It takes two years for an exam board to make a paper. I heard it's actually somewhere about 18 months, but for simplicity's sake, let's just say it's two years. These 2024 papers were not made the same year. They were made in 2022. The 2025 papers were made in 2023 and so on and so forth. I don't know if you guys know about examiner's reports, but they are basically your best bet at predicting what's going to come up next year. The chief examiner at AQA or OCR or whatever exam board always writes up reports year after year on how the nation did in each paper and on each question of the paper. These exam boards love their subject and they love their spec. They don't like it when only 1% of the nation gets a question right, especially if they thought more people were going to get it. They put all of this information into these examiners' reports. They want their spec taught and they want it taught well. So guess what they do? They repeat the questions that loads of people got wrong. And that repeat isn't going to happen a year later they haven't finished making the papers. That repeat most commonly happened two years later, sometimes three. For example, I was able to predict that there was going to be a potato core practical question that would talk about the isotonic, hyper and hypotonic states in the 2024 biology paper one exam that I sat last year. Why? How? Because all of the 2022 cohort collectively decided to flop that question. And guess what? I was flipping right and I gobbled down all of those nine marks. So if you could only choose one paper to do before the exam, pick the paper from two years ago. If you could only choose two, pick the paper from four years ago. Then for three papers, pick the paper from three years ago, then five years ago, and so on and so forth. There's no guarantee that 100% of the questions everyone flopped two years ago will come up on the next paper, but it is your best bet at predicting what might. Even though you may be prepared to tackle GCSE science now, are you prepared for maths? Are you prepared for English? You can click on either one of these videos for my subject specific advice, but if you just need study advice in general, go click on my channel icon instead. Go demolish that paper and let me know when you do.